How would wolverines in the world of dinosaurs look? How big can penguins be? What's an ancient creature aged billion years? Now I'll show you the remnants of animals and other creatures that'll change the whole history. Giant Worm People are always in search for new surprising remnants of different animals. However, it's rarely when their findings sink into heart. Basically, those are usual ancient creatures that were found early. But in this case, the archaeologists discovered something really fabulous. They found ancient worm bones under the ground. We're used that these living beings don't have anything dense inside. It's much likely that the ancient worms did. The research group rushed to study that and couldn't understand if it's real. Firstly, they had a completely different body structure. Secondly, it's all about their sizes. In all likelihood, these remnants will change human history and possibly open up new mysteries. Listen, maybe it's an alien? After all, no modern creature looks like this monster. At the same time, it's probable that something similar could develop on another planet. Write what you think about it in the comments. It'll be interesting to read. Missing Link of Evolution Here are three intriguing words that characterize the following finding. The scientists discovered the remnants of the first multicellular creature in the west of Scotland. It seems to be that its traces must be incredibly difficult to analyze as the first creature of this kind was discovered. Anyway, it's not the case. In reality, all the remnants were kept near to the ideal condition. They allowed the research group to study their entrails and find out their exact age. The multicellular organism died billions of years ago. What do you think about this age? The chances are that the scientists discovered exactly the creature that was first to be transformed into a multicellular creature from the unicellular one. What's more, the remnants were discovered in the freshwater lake. By this, we can judge that the multicellular creatures could have been born not in the salty waters of the seas and oceans, but in fresh basins. That'll turn around the way people look at the science. Dinosaur Egg Who could think that just one finding in our time is able to change so much, right? After all, people know and understand everything possible. The technologies help us make sure once more and get rid of doubts. But this is not the case. In 2021, an ancient egg from a dinosaur with an embryo was discovered in China. This means that the ancient reptiles and birds are interconnected. First things first. So this embryo was about 70 million years old. It was discovered in the south of China and classified as toothless theropod dinosaur or oviraptorosaur. The finding stands out against the common background because it poses the fullest embryo from all the rest ever discovered. However, the small lay in a different posture than those dinosaurs we'd seen earlier. Its head was placed lower than body with legs from both sides. The spine was bent along the egg's blunt end. The posture looks like one the modern bird embryos have. It became first sign for the scientists. It's vitally important for the birds to be in this position. It's the only case when they successfully hatch. Chicks make several movements. As a result, they bend their bodies and move their heads under their wing shortly before hatching. Those who don't do that stand a chance to die. This discovery led the scientists to suggest that such a unique behavior for the birds was developed among the theropods many dozens or hundreds of millions of years ago. Therefore, the chances are that the ancient reptiles and birds have much more in common than we used to think. Mabirasaurus Speaking of dinosaurs, Let's look at who was found in Zimbabwe. The international team involved in researchers there found the most ancient African dinosaur. This two-meter-long pangolin dwelled the Earth some 230 million years ago. Its skeleton was preserved very good. The only thing missing was a part of its skull and a forelimb. By standards of findings, it's a petty matter. In reality, such a finding is highly valuable. After all, the ancient creatures were extremely agile. This is why their bones were badly preserved and didn't survive until now. However, the paleontologists were lucky to find almost the whole dinosaur skeleton in Zimbabwe during their expeditions in 2017 and 2019. Like its brethren, this dinosaur was not very big but quite a successful predator, judging by the remnants. 
Possibly people will learn where the ancient creatures spent more of their time. Now we don't dispose of this information. I suggest that we keep to the subject of dinosaurs and look at something interesting and unusual. This is a new species of dwarf dinosaur as big as a dog. They were found in Romania not so long ago in 2022. In the course of the fossilized bone study, the scientists found out that the newly discovered creature belonged to a large species from France. At the same time, this dwarf didn't stand out for its dimensions, which puzzled the scientists. How could this happen? The only pleasure is that the animal wouldn't be dangerous for us if it survived until now. Not because of its size, but due to its herbivorous nature. Speaking of that, it's the reason why the animal didn't have a lot of enemies. Nobody wanted to chase after this nimble and herbivorous creature. As far as I'm concerned, I cannot imagine why the dwarf became extinct. It's known that it died in the water. The discovered bones were in river sediments for many years, thanks to which they were able to be preserved in a more or less good condition. The rest of the dinosaur's body parts are either scattered around or have completely disappeared. Armed Dinosaur from Argentina Here's another extremely interesting dinosaur found in Argentina. It belonged to the Thyrophorus group, herbivorous dinosaurs with large armor lined in longitudinal rows along the body. What's interesting, the found specimen had all the positive qualities as its brethren did, except that the creature was light as a feather, 11 to 15 pounds. The history is silent on this matter, why the creature was that small. If you have any version on this score, write in the comments. The following unusual finding was discovered in Great Britain. It's exactly there where the scientists found unbelievable teeth of the wolverine dinosaur. This creature, named Therizinosaurus, lived many millions of years ago. Albeit bears a severe name, the animal is funny and even clumsy at times with its length of 8 meters and huge paws. The beast had three incurved claws. Everything seems to be logical and understandable. They were necessary for hunting for other living creatures. Here's a small inconsistency. Therizinosaurus was a herbivorous animal. Nobody knows why it needed one of the longest claws on the planet. As well as nobody has the slightest idea why it had so many sharp and long teeth that were found in Great Britain. It's not likely that the herbivorous reptile used them to eat the grass throughout the day and went fighting at night to protect the brethren. If you weigh nine tons, everybody will be frightened to even approach you. So you won't even need the claws. By the way, it's curious how these pangolins were discovered. It was in the middle of the 20th century when the Soviet Mongolian expedition classified the newly discovered remnants to the water reptiles. People of that time were sure it was not a dinosaur but a turtle. Its claws were something like fang the creatures used to cut seaweed. It seems to me that it's hardly possible to mix up a penguin with someone else. Even when the archaeologists come across the remnants of an unusual giant monster, they're rather quick to conclude that it's a penguin they deal with. This is what they did in New Zealand when they came up to a specimen weighing 331 pounds. The creature belonged to an unknown species that dwelled the planet some 55 to 60 million years ago. The scientists proposed that was possibly one of the earliest ancient penguins. They had primitive fin bones. In many respects, the penguin resembled the modern seabirds that were good at swimming and diving. What's interesting, as the researchers think, the penguin had lost the ability to fly up in the air by the time of its existence. Giant Parrot We've already discussed the biggest penguin. That means it's time to talk about the biggest feather that can fly in contrast to our first guest. This bird was also discovered nowhere else but in New Zealand. It's curious that the discovery was made long ago, almost 15 years ago. Digging near the old gold mining pit in the region of Otago, the researchers came across partially preserved fossilized astragalus shin bone as well as a beak. They were obvious to belong to the same bird. First, people thought it was an eagle, so big the remnants were. When the bones were compared with other bird's bones, it became clear the discovery didn't have anything to do with eagles. That was obviously an ancient parrot people dealt with. Interestingly, it was a giant parrot. The lab analysis and modern methods confirmed that theory and the scientists opened a new species. It's considered that the giant dwelled our planet some 20 million years ago and could reach 3 feet in length and 22 pounds in weight. You must admit, that was a massive parrot in the past. Do you want to see it alive? Arctic Hyena To assess the force of the following creature, we'll have to travel to the Arctic. 
After all, that was where people found the remnants of the local hyena. Millions of years ago, these wild creatures have turned out to dwell even there. It was back in 1970 when the paleontologists found their fangs. However, they took 50 years more to study them until were reasonably examined. The modern hyenas and their arctic ancestors differed greatly from each other, as well as the tigers and their saber-toothed brethren. These unique creatures lived more than a million years ago and were surprisingly widespread. In contrast to their modern brethren, they were much more thin, agile, and furry. The paleontologists consider these hyenas near to ideal predators that left no chances for survival to the deer. They fed on carrion as well. They are the only representatives of the genus that managed to travel from Eurasia to North America. However, the scientists are not quite sure about that. It's supposed that several hyena generations covered that distance, not just a specific population or species. How do you think a sea creature of the past looked like? I say it was only the beginning when it started to develop a shell and differed greatly from all what we know now. It consisted of mild tissues and was not longer than 46 inches. No use wondering, it's difficult to imagine that. The creature was floating over the bottom surface and considered widely spread back then. Do you know how the scientists defined how it looked like? They selected specimens that preserved separate elements of soft tissues and united all the data received. As a result, the whole collection contained 11 fossilized arthropods out of several hundreds of them that preserve such elements as the eyes on a stalk, several legs, caudal fins, and others. As a result, the mystery of the past looked something like this. I say nobody managed to find out the essence of the creature. In other words, it's still unclear how it fed and reproduced and what it had where. Anyway, given the pace at which our science is moving, it won't be a year before the secret is revealed. Those were not only dinosaurs inhabiting our planet, but also birds not inferior to prehistoric pangolins. Later, I'll tell you about the biggest birds ever living on our planet, Argentavis. Usually, flying birds are not very large because it takes incredible strength to lift a huge body into the air and make it soar. That's why there are not many huge flying birds in the world. The same is true in prehistoric times, but there were some real unique creatures there. Argentavis was one of them. Until recently, it was considered the largest flying bird in the history of Earth. Just imagine, it had a wingspan of 23 feet. That's about three times the wingspan of the Golden Eagle, and this eagle is truly astonishing in terms of size. Also, Argentavis was heavy. It weighed about 154 pounds and it was also tall. It would seem that with such size, Argentavis had to at least fly very slowly, but even here, the prehistoric feathered creature can surprise us. Scientists believe that Argentavis flew at a speed of 42 miles per hour. This was more than enough to catch up with its prey and swoop down on it. Argentavis didn't hunt like many modern birds. These birds didn't use their talons or beak, but their whole body. Taking advantage of their size, these giants swooped down on their prey, stunned it with their bodies and swallowed it, sometimes even whole. Varambe. What you've just seen is nowhere near the limit for birds. Back in prehistoric times, there was something even bigger. The Varambe bird lived in Madagascar, and it died out not so long ago compared to Argentavis, only about a thousand years ago. Varambe is the case when the size is simply unbelievable, because these giants weighed about 1,750 pounds, almost a ton for a bird, just think about it. This is the largest bird in history known to science at the moment. It wasn't just their weight that made Varambe stand out, but also their height. They grew up to 10 feet in height. Even such giants as modern ostriches seem not so large in comparison with them. By the way, Varambe are connected with ostriches by the fact that they also didn't fly. After all, it's unrealistic to lift 1,750 pounds using wings, but this didn't confuse Varambe. They were quite comfortable on the ground. Besides, they didn't really claim anything. They were to be feared only because of their appearance, but not because of their behavior. Varambe were nocturnal and were not insane predators. They ate plants, fruit, seeds, and foliage. 
But this feathered creature was a true predator, feared by all sea creatures that lived 34 to 23 million years ago. This is Pelagornis cindersi. Until 2014, scientists considered Argentavis to be the largest flying bird, but then they found the remains of Pelagornis, and it became the champion. It's this giant that's recognized as the largest flying bird of all time. The wingspan of these giants reached almost 25 feet. Take a look at this picture, where the giant Pelagornis is compared to a condor and an albatross. These are some of the largest modern birds, but even they seem small in comparison to Pelagornis. I'll talk more about them today, by the way. As for Pelagornis cindersi, it was an aggressive marine bird of prey. It didn't dive into the water, but descended and caught prey directly from the surface. Its beak had sharp, teeth-like outgrowths, so the prey was quickly trapped. Interestingly, Pelagornis was so huge that it couldn't take off from the spot like ordinary birds. To take off, the giant approached a cliff, jumped off, and only then began to flap its huge wings. At the same time, it developed a speed of up to 37 miles per hour, which is unrealistically high for such size. Terror Birds This is not a description of any particular bird, it's its full name. Not every bird deserves to have such a title, but Forest Rookidae did. The birds of the Forest Rookidae family were indeed a terror. First, they were huge. They reached 10 feet in height, had a very long neck, as well as long and sharp talons and a powerful beak. Secondly, they accelerated to almost 31 miles per hour. They accelerated on the ground because they couldn't fly. This is a case where it was safer in the sky than on the land because terror birds were ruthless. They're sort of prehistoric, evil doppelgangers of the ostrich. Terror birds caught up with their prey, wounded it with their talons, and then inflicted a fatal blow to the head with their beak. When the prey was strong or large, terror birds used tactics. They delivered a precise blow to vital organs and at the same time hit the head. By the way, it's among terror birds that the largest bird's skull can be found. It belonged to Kalenken, a Forasukidae genus. It was 29 and a half inches long. For you to understand, even the largest modern crocodiles do not always have such long skulls. In ancient and prehistoric times, one could find many huge birds, but even now there are plenty of giant birds. I suggest you travel back to our time and take a look at the biggest birds of the planet that are living right now. Ostrich. Let's start with the largest modern bird. The common ostrich is unrivaled in terms of size among all the birds on the planet. These giants can reach 8.8 .8 feet in height and weigh more than 330 pounds. Even by the standards of prehistoric flightless birds, this is not a bad size and it's just amazing for the modern world. Although ostriches cannot fly, they're great runners. These giants are able to accelerate up to 43 miles per hour making steps of 13 feet long, so they can catch up with even a car. What's also interesting is that ostriches are able to change direction without losing speed. This helps them a lot when they run away from predators. Even swift cheetahs cannot always catch up with ostriches. Although these big cats run very fast, they don't maneuver so deftly on turns. Ostriches are non-conflict creatures. They can engage in direct combat only if the offender doesn't calm down and continues to pounce on them, or if someone encroaches on their territory and chicks. In other cases, the ostrich will prefer to run away. But sometimes it can bravely take the fight and defeat even dangerous and large predators. In this, it's helped by incredibly sharp talons on its feet, with which the ostrich is able to kill even a lion. But this is rare, because ostriches are not aggressive creatures. That's not the case with the cassowary, another huge modern bird. They have something in common with ostriches. Cassowaries cannot fly, are characterized by their large size, run fast, and have sharp talons as well. However, unlike ostriches, cassowaries use their talons much more often and fiercely. Many experts agree that the cassowary is the most dangerous bird on the planet, and that makes sense. At the very least, it's one of the few birds that can kill a human. Unfortunately, this has happened before. 
Just one precise blow with a 12-centimeter long talon is enough to finish off the offender. Large cassowaries are much more intolerant than peaceful ostriches. A human still has to try to set an ostrich off, but for the cassowaries, even the slightest reason can become a cause of conflict. These birds do not tolerate strangers, fiercely chasing them out of their territory and sometimes even come out to people to scare them. Cassowaries are also dangerous for their own congeners. This is characteristic during the period of competition for females. In a furious battle, a cassowary can kill its opponent or another animal that's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Wandering Albatross Let's move on to flying birds. If you remember when I talked about Pelagornis cinderci, I showed a picture comparing this prehistoric monster with an albatross. It was a wandering albatross. It may not be as big as Pelagornis cinderci, but in comparison with modern birds, it looks insanely huge. And no wonder, since it's the largest flying bird at the moment. The length of the adult bird's body alone can reach 3.9 feet. But the main feature of this albatross is not its body, but its wings. Their wingspan can reach 10.6 feet. And this isn't the limit. The record belongs to the wandering albatross that was caught in Australia in 1965. That feathered creature's wingspan was 11.9 feet. Thanks to these huge and powerful wings, the wandering albatross can fly up to 620 miles in a day. And it can fly against the wind. No wonder it got its name, because it's a real wanderer. However, it's not a fan of visiting different countries. The habitat of the wandering albatross is limited to the Antarctic Islands. It's over the territory of this cold continent that you can encounter these flying giants. There, as well as just north of Antarctica, they nest in colonies. Which of these birds surprised you most of all? Write in the comments. Later, I'll show you animals that are born once in a thousand years. Super Horse I don't think I'd be lying if I said that horses are born every day. Really big horses are born less often, and a giant like Samson is by right the animal that's born once in a thousand years. This is a huge horse, which has no equal, has never been and probably will not be for a long time yet. Moreover, there was no equal to this horse and probably won't be for a long time. This horse of the Shire breed was born in the 19th century in England. His height was about 7.2 feet and he weighed 3,351 pounds. This is the tallest and heaviest horse ever recorded. It's impossible to believe that such a horse really existed. In general, the Shire breed horses are famous for their large size and abilities. They can be used for towing heavy objects, races, and more. There are a lot of giants among the Shire, but such horse as Samson is exactly one in a million, or even a billion. Pearl. What color are crocodiles? Green, of course. Well, or black if we're talking about black caimans. But crocodiles can also be white. However, such crocodiles are born very rarely. One such unique albino is a rare female alligator named Pearl. Though in fact it's not even an albino, in this case we're dealing with leucism, a partial loss of pigmentation, not the complete loss as in the case of albinism. The female is young, she's about 15 years old, which is quite a small age for alligators that live up to 50 to 60 years. Pearl's not very big, weighing only about 110 pounds and reaching 10 feet in length. She lives in an American theme park in Florida. Only there can Pearl live normally. After all, in the wild it's almost impossible to live with leucism. The predator wouldn't be able to blend in with her surroundings and hunt effectively, and the scorching rays of the sun would quickly destroy her sensitive skin. But in captivity, she's well taken care of, so she's safe here. You must admit, animals with leucism and albinism are quite easy to confuse. After all, both are white. As for albinos, there's a place for them in this episode. The first is the very rare albino shark. This in itself is unique, but the individual is also one-eyed. The cyclops and albino mix, such creatures are definitely born only once in a thousand years or even less often. An incredible individual was found in Mexico. It was caught by a fisherman named Enrique. Unfortunately, he caught the already dead individual, so scientists couldn't properly study it. However, they found out that the little one-eyed shark was in the same litter with nine other baby sharks that were born normal. The albino turned out to be the only shark with pathology among its congeners. This makes the individual even more unique and unusual. Yoda 
Someone has oddities with eyes and skin color, and someone has oddities with ears. For example, Yoda. No, I'm not talking about a Jedi Master, although his ears were also strange and unusual. I mean Yoda the Cat, who was born with two pairs of ears. The owners didn't go wrong with the name, it'd be wrong to call this furball otherwise. What happened to Yoda is an extremely rare case of congenital anomaly. The owners took Yoda home as a kitten, instantly falling in love with the unusual creature. However, his ears worried them a little, so the owners decided to check Yoda at the veterinarian. He was shocked by such a phenomenon and stated that he'd only heard about something like this once, but had not seen it personally. The vet admitted that Yoda is special. And more importantly, despite the strange ears, Yoda's hearing is fine, and his health in general is fine too. Snake with a paw Everyone knows that snakes have no limbs, but as it turned out, there are special exceptions. So, a few years ago, a snake got into one of those Chinese houses, and the owner of the house killed the reptile in fear. She was about to throw the body away when she suddenly saw a paw sticking out of the snake. The reptile really had a limb growing. But how? What made the snake so unusual? Most scientists believe that the snake was a mutant, but some scientists have suggested that the snake ate some lizard, its paw somehow didn't digest, took root in the snake's body, and even managed to grow through the skin. Whatever the correct version is, the snake looks creepy. And most importantly, it looks very unusual. Scientists have previously found the remains of ancient snakes that had something similar to paws, but they've never seen such a creature handed to them by a Chinese woman. It's possible that the snake with a paw is the only such individual in history. The same can be said about the next animal from this episode, the Venezuelan poodle moth. It became known in 2009 when zoologist Arthur Anker took a picture of the creature in Canema National Park in Venezuela. It's believed that this particular individual has not been seen anywhere else. Despite the fact that the range of the Venezuelan poodle moth is known, it has not yet been identified or described as a separate species. So all that remains is to speculate and guess. Some scientists believe that the Venezuelan poodle moth belongs to the snout moths family. Others believe that the creature may be somehow related to the tiger moth. One way or another, scientists still cannot describe the species and establish its belonging to a particular family or order. Maybe you can. Share your guesses in the comments. <laughs> That's all, guys. Which rare animal surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and see you later.